Okay, uh, Missy, first of all, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for your time. Happy birthday, and what a way to celebrate your birthday. Thank you. Um, I know. It's the best birthday present that I've got, getting promoted. And, you know, it capped a nice season for, obviously, Liverpool, but also for yourself. Yeah, I think we've worked hard week in, week out, and it's only what we deserve as a team. We've put in the effort, and it showed. We've got results, and that's all we needed to do. Tell us about that feeling of scoring that goal, you know, in Bristol and the thoughts afterwards, what were going through your head? I was on the bench, when I? And I was speaking to my mate Jade on the side and I said, if I come on, I'm going to score. And she said, if you do, you've got to do a knee slide. <laughs> so I did. So then I had to do it and we was just laughing and it was great. Like, I used to watch Gerard do it and stuff. Like, he was my idol, he still is. So it's great to be able to put my own like memories of watching him into perspective. It's interesting that you say about Gerard being your idol because I've been asking all the girls today like who were their idol growing up and obviously you were, we all know that you're a big red yourself and Gerard's your era. So how important do you like to get excited to think that in like ten years or whatever I'm gonna sit here asking the next player and they're gonna say, Oh Missy was my idol? I haven't really thought of that, I'll be honest, but if I can have an impact on any girl who plays football or boy who look up to me, I think it's a proud moment and any way I could help or like impact on someone's life, I'd love to like do that, if that makes sense. I think I want to be a, known as a person who's approachable, who gives good feedback or like and lets off a good smile or whatever. I want to be a person people will remember as the player that I was. Maybe in 10, 15 years, I think you want to have a good career, don't you? But if I keep working hard and playing my football, and doing stuff off the pitch, good. I think nothing's stopping me from achieving that. Well, this year, this season's been like a breakout year for yourself, hasn't it? You know, uh, youngest captain of Liverpool, like the goals that you've scored, international call-ups. You know, how just talk to us about that, and also like how it feels for your family, for for you know daughter to be playing for Liverpool. And... I think they're proud of me. I think they see me every day don't they I'll still live at home and they see the ups they see the downs and I think when they're seeing all these highs getting called off for England youngest Liverpool women's captain winning promotion I think they're, they're like wow and they remind me of it when sometimes things might not be going well if you're not playing or whatever no one's happy when they're not playing and it, I've been lucky enough to play the majority of the minutes this season and but you, and I don't take it for granted. You want to play as many minutes as possible. You want to stay fit. You don't want to be injured. And I think that's the proud aspect where they can probably see where they don't. It's not always smiley smiley football. Sometimes you might have a little few bad days or whatever. And they're looking forward to the weekend because they know I'll have a smile on my face. It's interesting you say that because a lot of players, it's always like, oh yeah, my family keep me grounded, they stop me from being big-headed. But you're almost like from the other perspective where like when you're having it down, they're like, no, you're still doing good and keeping your spirits up. But on the, the keep me grounded, I'll tell you that. Like, I can't remember the last time a family member said, say if I have a good game or a score, the first thing they say is, but you've done this, but you've done that. It, there's always the negatives, but I like that. I think, if anyone, you listen to your family the most and you trust your family the most, what they're saying is you take it on board, whether you might pretend you're not listening. You're always taking in what your family say to you, and I think most people are probably the same, and I respect that. I think they've helped me get to where I am now, and I'll always be privileged. We've seen also that Trent Alexander-Arnold came to watch you for the game that you were captain at. Um, has he given you advice as well? You know, how much do you speak to players like that? Have you got any connections there? Yeah, and no, of Trent. He's from Liverpool. When we were younger, I used to like, I'd say like, I'd talk to him if I seen him. Do you know what I mean? Um, he's doing brilliant, and it was great for me and the girls to see him come to one of our games. He didn't have to do that. I think showing his time, it's like puts a smile on all our face and I think it was one of the highlights of the season and for me I didn't know he was here I was I got told at half time and I was like oh that's unbelievable like it's usually us going to watch them so it was nice to have it the other way around for a change and hopefully many more of them come or Trent might come back if he enjoyed it the two scousers in the team, you know, it's got to be a bit of synergy there <laughs> um, I had a rumour that you once played football with Curtis Jones 
Is this true? Yeah, me and teammates? Curtis played for Mossley Hill when we were kids, um, before we both signed for Liverpool. And he was the same player that he is now. He'd take you on, he'd come back, he'd take you on again, and he deserves everything. Like, joining an academy at such a young age, it's not easy. People might think, oh, he's at Liverpool, but was at Liverpool, what a life. But the sacrifices and stuff you have to make, it's not easy. And if everyone could do it, everyone would do it. And I think it just shows the ones who do make it, it's hard work, commitment. So for Curtis, I'm made up for everything that he's starting to achieve, but it's only the start. He's the same age as me, and he's got the world at his feet if he keeps working hard. And from your perspective, though, playing against boys and how that, how you know, what was that like as a girl growing up? It didn't phase me one bit. I think there was people on the sidelines saying, "Oh, tackle her, tackle her," but I just used to like laugh and just cut it all out. And once I had the ball at my feet and that I was on the pitch, I was just playing. The, the lads in my team didn't find any different because they know I could keep up. I used to score, I used to assist, so it didn't affect them. They knew I could play football, so. It didn't bother me really, but I think now young girls growing up, it's it's normal playing football. When I was a kid, I was the only girl on Head and Eccles, say. There's ten football pitches, I was the only girl there, but it didn't really faze me. I just love playing football. And if anything, it gives you more determination to prove everyone wrong, right? Yeah, exactly. You want to achieve things, and if you... At that time, I didn't know there was like a women's academy set up, so I just thought, oh, I'm going to have to play with the lads. I was saying, oh, I'm going to play with... For Liverpool, I want to be Gerard, but now for young girls, as you said before, they can look up and say, I want to be Neve Fahey, I want to be anyone in the Liverpool team, and I think it's great. Um, you, we always see on social media, you follow Liverpool all over, home, away. You know, how, how incredible has this season been also as a fan? It's been unbelievable, but it's affecting me holidays. We finish early May, but we're getting to finals. We could be in the Champions League final, so... Looks like I'm going to be staying home until Liverpool men's season's finished because I can't be missing them because, as I said, I love the matches. So it's unbelievable. Everything that they're achieving, like, it's special. My dad's even said to me, this team's special. Enjoy it because not, things don't last forever, do they? So I'm enjoying every moment watching them. Like last night, 4-0 against United five years ago, you wouldn't think Liverpool would play the United off the park like they did last night, and it's great. When you're there... And you know, you're in the stands at Anfield watching the men's first team. Do you watch it like purely as a fan, or is there a little bit of you, like as a player, watching it from a tactical point of view and thinking, oh, you know, that's that's going on there, or how he's playing? I watch it as a fan because I know football, because I've been coach football. I'm criticising them at the same time. Oh, why aren't you passing it there? Why aren't you doing that? But if that's just because I, I love Liverpool and I want them to win, so I think it's a bit of both. But I am a fan when I'm watching it. I think it was Andrea Pirlo who said that only 5% of football fans actually understand football. So you must be in that 5%. You actually understand what's going yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I'm in the, well, some of the things some of the fans say, I'm like, oh, you haven't got a clue. But you've just got to bite your lip, haven't you, and just watch the game. Enjoy it whilst you can. Um, obviously, this, this year has been an incredible season for so many of the girls. We're asking everybody who's their players, player of the year. I'd say Rachel Lawsey. I think the, the amount of clean sheets and that she's kept for us has been brilliant. But not only that, a distribution with her feet. She creates goals from the way she plays out from the back and it doesn't go unnoticed. We're a team that likes to keep the ball and Lawsey is a big part of that because we might have to set her back, use her, and the way she can just clip it. like There's not many female goalies who've got feet like her, but not only that, she's kept clean sheets so she can save shots as well. I mean, the defensive record this season, eight goals conceded, is you know pretty incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Um, obviously, everybody Liverpool's talking about the quadruple, but with the league title already wrapped up for the women, it's obviously a quintuple. Um, so congratulations on that. Just finally, any plans for Sunday night? Or are you going to be going from here straight to watch the derby? Well, I don't know yet. It depends what time we finish here. But after we've lifted the cup, if we've got time, I'll go to the derby and then I'll go back and meet the girls. But... I can't be missing the men's games at the minute. They're too intense, especially after last night. But this weekend's about us and me and my team, so maybe I might have to miss the derby. We'll, I'll decide in a few days. It, I've, I'm still in two minds, indecisive.